Hi. Uh, my kid came to me this morning. She didn't really come to me. I went to her. Uh, we're we're in a position where we're not in quarantine, but we are. We're stuck outside of China, where we're meant to be returning to work, and uh, been out outside of China for like six months now. The thing is, uh, so it's kind of difficult with schooling. Like I'm online teaching, and my child is my child's just at home, and she spends an inordinate amount of time on her tablet. Some of it's really good stuff. Some of it's a lot of really cool games. Some of it's music she's listening to. But I've I've been th I have attempted to do some home-ish schooling with a bit of maths and reading, etc. So this morning. I got out the the maths uh, app and some of the stuff that we were going to do, we were going to do even and odd numbers, okay? And as I was getting into it, my child looks up at me like she's going to be delivering some bad news and she says to me, now keep in mind my child is eight years old, she's just got into grade two this year. So she's preparing me for, you know, she's getting ready to tell me this bad news and her bad news is that Mom, I'm just not good at maths. Now she's eight, right? She's in grade two. And I said, where did you get this from? She goes, well, my teacher told me in grade one that I wasn't good at maths. I just want to preface something. We live in China and she's going to a Chinese school. A lot of the kids there have been training in basic forms of writing and maths, Chinese writing and English characters and alphabet and, and maths, like lots of maths, since like they were about three years old, as they do. And she hasn't, she, when she entered grade one, she hadn't had any of that. We'd done a lot of playing at home. Uh, she could pretty much do whatever she wanted. She had a lot of artistic stuff, paints and drawings and listening to, we shared We'd play around on YouTube and find stuff that we both like listening to. And then, yeah, we, we just did loads of different things. And I didn't discourage her from playing games. I always, because I, I actually think there's a way we learn from playing games. She had a lot of this, loads of other stuff. She did attend a kindergarten, um, sort of Montessori style, not exactly Montessori style kindergarten. And, yeah. So she hadn't had any of the intensive academic training that the average Chinese child had. Her grade one maths teacher tells her when she sees what she can do, she goes, oh, you're not good at maths. So basically now my child believes from grade one that she's inherently not good at maths. She doesn't have the goods. What does this mean? Basically, if I don't counter this, and I did counter it, if I don't counter it by telling her, Han, your, your maths teacher's opinion that you're bad at maths has no, got nothing to do with your inherent ability. You're just inexperienced. You're inexperienced and you're new to it. Anyone who's new to something, anyone who's new to anything, can not necessarily like maybe three months later say oh I'm just not good at this you're new to it and I'm not just talking about kids I'm talking about adults uh, maybe coming up to something that they that they think they should be moving faster in with their brain or, or their development or the way they're learning something be careful of saying you're just not good at something or somebody else is just not good at something oh they just don't have it in them I mean how many times have you heard those stories where you have a very successful older person, maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, who's just gotten into something that they've recently become good at, but when they first prefaced it as a child, they were told they were crap. Or they told they were they were told they were terrible because they weren't doing well, they weren't doing expectedly well at that particular stage. So I think we've really got to look at this. Be careful of what you say to people. Be careful of what you're 
telling them about what they're capable of. We don't know. We don't know what they're capable of. They don't even know what they're capable of. But if they keep working at it, they could get somewhere really amazing. So I, I set, I set my, my child down and I went through this with her. But basically, yeah, give yourselves and give other people like half a chance about this. Not everyone's going to have fantastic aptitudes with something immediately. If they don't pick it up, something of it up within like a couple of weeks, you can't prejudge them. We don't have authority on intelligence and how it works. Some people can, can start with something and do amazingly well really quickly. And others are more slow burn, you know, like slow burn learners. You can't just go... Uh, you're not picking it up like with it like the other people or you can't you, you got obviously crap at this Come on now We know enough to know we know enough these days to know that we don't know everything and especially about intelligence That's changing all the time if you follow articles and studies on it So go easy don't prejudge be careful of prejudging someone Because if they hear the wrong if they hear a discouraging message at an important time in their growth or their development that, that could stay with them for years and it could affect how they approach things what how much courage they have to approach or challenge themselves with the next thing anyway yeah good luck with yourselves and what you're planning on learning new in the future and what you're thinking of trying and good luck to your kids too and be be careful it, it's not that you have to say, oh honey, you're good at everything, no. But just be careful of telling someone, oh, you're terrible at this, don't, stop trying. That's how we kill artists. That's how we kill creatives. That's how we kill anyone who's just trying something for the first time. Take it easy. Take it easy on yourselves. Take it easy on your kids.